So last week we published our rigs of the Tour Divide series and over the past week I ended up taking the first 100 submissions and plugging them into a spreadsheet to get a clear picture of these specific rigs. So in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the data to find out where people are from, the types of bikes, tires, and cargo setups they're using, their gear choices, and plenty more. And I think you'll probably be pretty surprised about some of our findings. All right, let's get into it. Before we dive into the 100 rigs I studied, I wanted to share the overall numbers of this year's Tour Divide. So according to trackleaders.com, 225 folks have signed up. And unfortunately, there are far fewer women than men with only 21 women highlighting a significant disparity. The age distribution is also really interesting here. So the 30s age group had the most participants last year, but this year the 50 to 59 age group was uh, more popular with 23.6% of the field. The 30s was next with 22.8%, followed by the 60s at 21.1%. Additionally, there was a handful of 70 year olds and one participant under 20, actually they're 15 years old, which is quite impressive. I don't even remember what I was doing at 15, uh, but I'm sure that they will not forget this experience. It's pretty impressive. All right, so over the years, the Tour Divide yeah, it's truly become a diverse race. Maybe the most diverse bikepacking race out there, attracting participants from all over the world. And it's no surprise that the United States is well represented with 131 individuals coming from the states, the most of which was Colorado, followed by California, but 34 states were represented. Outside of the United States, there were 92 participants from 21 different countries. Most notably, New Zealand had 21 individuals, Canada had 19, Australia had at 15, and there were 12 folks from the UK. There were also folks from the United Arab Emirates, Lebanon, Finland, and the Czech Republic, and all over the globe. Among the information I gathered from the 100 rigs, 77 are considered rookies, meaning they've never pedaled the Tour Divide before. There were also 10 individuals who had stated that they raced previously, but have not finished, and 13 veterans who are returning, uh, a few of whom have actually completed the race more than once, which is always awesome to see. But again, a lot of rookies in this group. So before we move along, I just want to take a quick moment to let you all know that this video is supported in part by Tailfin. Tailfin designs and engineers technical bikepacking equipment for almost any kind of adventure. Innovation and quality are at the heart of what makes them tick, and their constant strive to create better performing gear means that you can just focus on enjoying the ride. They offer a range of options for hauling your gear, whether you're tackling the Tour Divide or just escaping for an overnighter. So for more on Tailfin, be sure to click on the card in the top right corner, or you can also follow the link in the description below. All right, so let's talk about the rigs. Usually one of the most interesting talking points among racers and of course dot watchers. This year was very similar to last year, but there were also some notable changes. In total, 45 bike brands were represented and 63 different types of bikes were used. Just like last year, the Salsa Cutthroat was the most popular with 19% of participants riding it. The next most popular category was custom or homemade bikes with six rigs, five of which were flat bar bikes. Um, and then here's a rundown of the remaining bikes, a bunch from Trek and Specialized and a variety of others. All right, so diving a bit deeper here, over half of the bikes were made of carbon fiber, 29% uh, titanium, 12 were steel, and 6% were made out of aluminum. So comfort is clearly a priority for many participants, as over half of the riders were using some sort of suspension, roughly 52%, while 42% had rigid forks, and six participants lined up with a full suspension bike. All right, so wrapping up our bikes portion, the preference for flat versus drop bars was basically evenly split, with 54 bikes featuring flat bars and 40 
46 featuring drop bars. And for kicks here, I actually checked to see the difference between materials and drop in flat bars. And the biggest difference was that there were 22 titanium flat bars and only seven titanium drop bars. Oh, and I almost forgot, only 14 bikes were without aero bars. So that makes 86% of folks using these little couches for your forearms. Yeah, you gotta love it. All right, so it's drivetrain time and the results were pretty similar to last year, SRAM was clearly the most trusted drivetrain last year, and it continues to dominate this year with 61% of participants using SRAM. This was followed by Shimano at 28% and Pinion at 3%, which is an increase from last year. And Roloff also had one bike. Additionally, seven participants were single speed riders. You can just scroll through the list and you'll see a whole lot of one by setups. And given SRAM's preference for one by setups, it's not surprising that there were 71 one by 12 drivetrains and 15 one by 11 drivetrains and that one one by 14 roll off. So that's 87% of the bikes equipped with one by drivetrains. There were also five bikes with two by drivetrains featuring an eight, 10, and then three 11 speed setups. The seven single speed bikes had various kind of gear ratios. There were three with 32, 17, uh, two with 34, 18, one with 38, 19, and one with 42, 20. We also gathered data on chain ring sizes this year at your request from rigs of last year. And the most popular chain ring size was 32 teeth uh, used by 31 bikes, followed by 36 teeth uh, and 38 teeth. As expected, the flat bar bikes typically use the smaller rings while drop bar bikes use larger rings. Finally, in terms of electronic shifting, SRAM also leads this category. Like last year, no bike in this group were equipped with Shimano DI2. All 31 participants using electronic shifting were equipped with the SRAM Access 1x system, with many of those being the new Eagle transmission. Of the electronic bikes, 19 had drop bars and 12 had flat bars. All right, so let's get into some tires and wheel sizes. Ooh. So it's no surprise, 29 inch wheels are the most popular. Again, 91% of riders are using them and only 9% using 27.5 inch wheels. All right, so I tried to break down the categories that would maybe help evenly distribute the widths, but uh, I couldn't. The results are definitely telling here. So the 2.2 to 2.25 category was the most common used by 63% of riders. So followed by 2.3 to 2.35, which was only at 12%. And then 11% uh, were using tires in the 2.1 to 2.15 inch range. So this means that 86% of riders we're using tires between 2.1 and 2.35 inches. In terms of tire brands, Victoria dominated with 46 riders using their tires, followed by Maxxis at 18 and Rene Ayres rounding out the top three at 14. Specifically, the Victoria Mezcal was overwhelmingly popular with 45 of the 46 Vittoria users choosing this tire. The second most common uh, tire, well, actually this was a tie, Maxxis Icon and the Continental Race King, each used by 11 riders. Overall, 10 tire brands were represented with a total of 23 different tire models. All right, so let's talk about cargo next. And well, I think this is always kind of an exciting topic and we've seen significant changes over the last few years, especially with the resurgence of the rear rack. So this year, 47% of the rigs were equipped with some type of rear rack with the majority, 28, using ta uh, the tail fin system, tail fin aero pack. There were also five old man mountain racks and various others, including custom racks. As for seat packs, well, 52% of the riders were using them. The most popular brand was Revelate Designs with 21 riders using their packs, followed by Apodura with seven and Porcelain Rocket, now basically Rockgeist with four. There were 20 different seat pack and 10 unique rack setups. Plus one person was using a large trailer instead of any rear storage. Well, that was rear storage, but they're, yeah, 
you get it. Anyways, so regarding brand consistency, there were only 15 bikes using the same brand for all of their gear. Of these, seven were using Revelate Designs bags, and while some were sponsored athletes, others were not. All right, so I'm also always curious about using cargo on your fork or not. Uh, and this year, it was pretty evenly split. In fact, evenly split with half of the riders uh, loading their fork with some sort of cargo, be it water bottles or something else, and the other half not loading anything on there. All right, so wrapping up with some random but pretty interesting findings here. There were 73 riders using clipless systems, 16 using flats, and 11 using a hybrid pedal that are basically clipless on one side and flats on the other. Despite the rise of powerful and lightweight cash batteries, Dynamo hubs remain very popular with 68% of riders using a Dynamo hub, mostly paired with Dynamo specific lighting. And most riders were using a rigid seat post 72, while 14 bikes had dropper posts and another 14 were using some sort of suspension seat post from the likes of Cane Creek or Redshift. And although I didn't ask specifically, 44 riders ended up sharing their navigation choice. Uh, and the most popular was the Garmin Edge 1040 Solar used by 13 riders, followed by the Wahoo Element Rome with 10. And there was one person using uh, paper maps. Yeah, Bob would love that. Absolutely. All right, so that wraps it up for this year. So what do you all think about these numbers? Does anything kind of stand out to you? Is there a specific set that you would like to see included next year? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you want to help support us a little bit more, you can do so by joining the Bikepacking Collective. The Bikepacking Collective has a lot of awesome perks, including industry discounts, monthly giveaways, and the twice yearly Bikepacking Journal. So to learn a little bit more about the Bikepacking Collective, you can click on the link in the top right corner or also follow the link in the description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, pedal further.